and it is a Wednesday evening, September 9th, coming to you for just a few moments with Psalm 69 this evening. This is a pretty long psalm, one of the longer psalms that is also a prayer for help. What's interesting about this psalm is that it has everything in it. The psalm starts with crying out to God regarding the psalmist's personal troubles, and then it goes into um, the enemies that are coming after the person. Then it talks, the psalmist talks about his or her own sin, so confesses that, um, laments to God for God's inaction, and then um, moves into some very typical cries for help, as well as, of course, praise and ultimate trust in God. And what's unique about this psalm is simply that all of those topics are familiar to us in the psalms, but they're usually not all in one psalm. And so that's what's what's fairly unique about the psalm. I'm actually going to start this evening on verse 13. I'm going to read verses 13 through 18 and then pick it up again at verse 30 and read to the end of the psalm. And so as you have time and inclination, I invite you to um, spend time with with the rest of the psalm at, at your leisure. But I wanted to bring you a part of it this evening and then share with you a little bit more that I discovered in my in my research about this psalm. So we begin Psalm 69, verse 13. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me. Redeem me. Set me free because of my enemies. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving, and this will please the Lord more than an ox or a bull with horns and hoofs. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. And his servants shall live there and possess it. The children of his servants shall inherit it. And those who love his name shall live in it. The other thing that I wanted to just share with you about this psalm is that it's a psalm that is often um, noted several times in the gospel readings. There's a in parts of the psalm a suffering servant motif. And because of that, this psalm is often mentioned, I believe. Let me look here quick in. Mm, yep all four of the Gospels, and so we hear it that way. And I just wanted to read a little bit about that. Um, this prayer was used by the Gospel writers to describe Jesus's ministry and suffering. Jesus knows all about this complex relationship between God and humans, as well as humans with other humans. He came to save the world, but that very same world, of course, betrayed and crucified him that he would still offer them salvation. His enemies were those that he created and he loved and he suffered as part of a divine mystery, but his suffering wasn't punishment from God for sin. This prayer and Jesus's ministry, death and resurrection all proclaim that God's kingdom does not operate on a strict system of punishment and reward. And we too get to live in this same complex web of relationships that we have with God and that we too have with one another. But in all of it, of course, we depend on God's mercy and grace. Sometimes we get the answers that we seek. Other times 
we have to live with the whys and the not knowing and the complicated, complicated relationships that we are a part of. Even when we don't completely understand, however, we can still, as the psalmist said, give praise to God for all that God has done for us. All right. Thanks for spending a few moments with me and we will see you tomorrow night.